This game is awesome, 64 edition. We have a brand new interview from Shigeru Miyamoto translated for the first time in English. Thank you so much to all of you out there who funded this translation and to Cody Nicolo who actually did the translation work. Now this interview was done at a pivotal time for Nintendo. It is 1997. The N64 has been out for a year, but the games are only just kind of slowly trickling down to consumers. Still, there is plenty of potential for growth, including growth via the soon-to-be-doomed 64 disk drive add-on. Now, keep in mind that at this time, the 64DD was still assumed by the public to be coming out in the near future. If you want to learn more information on why it was held back by Nintendo, we actually did another interview translation. This time, the interviewee was Yoshio Hongo, the head of PR at Nintendo, and he explains exactly why Nintendo was so hesitant to release it. That said, picture yourself in 1997. Hopes are high for the new console, yet Miyamoto is already having some struggles and admitting some frustration. Now, I won't be reading the entire interview in this video. I will be linking it in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. Uh, but I will be going over some key points and pivotal moments from the interview. Plus, honestly, doing a YouTube video on it is a better way to get the information out there. I have a bigger reach on YouTube than I do on, say, like Twitter, for example. In the introduction, the article states, For Nintendo gaming hardware, unlike computer hardware, there are tools for new ways to play. These are what give the new fun born from Nintendo a tangible form. Then, developers can continue to provide that tangible new fun, like the ever-developing Mr. Miyamoto. In the present, the Nintendo 64, or N64, is the newest console sold by Nintendo. So, since the N64 console is the connection to the Famicom and Super Famicom, isn't it natural to have high expectations for it? The N64 is a new tool to use for Mr. Miyamoto, so of course he'll make new ways to play. Isn't that what we would expect? That's just how it is, right? Then the interviewer goes on to say, Until now for Nintendo, they've released N64 games like Super Mario 64, Mario Kart 64, Star Fox 64, and more. Since all of these games were produced by you, Mr. Miyamoto, there was nothing for us to worry about. As our readers can tell from the game's titles, calling them a new game is like calling them a new version of the game from the Super Famicom. That's the point. That's how it works for Super Famicom games like Mario Kart or Star Fox or anything else. That's how this new N64 fun from Mr. Miyamoto is named. Mr. Miyamoto says, Those games could be called extensions of their Super Famicom versions, sure, but I can't say that their titles have really meant a new way to play for everyone that's seen them. There are two reasons for that. First, people have said, I can already play that game. It's just a version upgrade, so it's not that much different. I think that has a deeper meaning behind it. On the surface, I can't think about any other way but negatively when it comes to those games that are Super Famicom extensions. Secondly, and more importantly, it's people saying the N64's new ways to play that were like Super Mario 64 aren't really coming from Nintendo until next year in 1998. That motivates everyone who's still working hard on those games, though. The interviewer states, so for the N64, those have become its two problems. One is people saying, I can just play the Super Famicom versions instead of the enhanced ones. And the other is people saying, there should be new ways to play that aren't possible on the Super Famicom. Those are its two problems. Now let's break down a little bit what Mr. Miyamoto is saying here. So yes, he claims that these games could be called extensions, but their titles weren't really ever meant to imply that. However, this concept is a big problem for him, or at least in his mind, because he thinks people are just considering them to be upgrades and not worthwhile. Now, keep in mind, I don't know what market he's referring to exactly. He could be referring to the domestic Japanese market and not the international market. I'm not quite sure. I know when I was growing up, I never really considered the N64 titles to be like upgrades. I thought of them as whole new games in 3D, which was more than just a minor upgrade for me anyways. But again, it's not clear exactly who he's talking about. This also kind of reminds me of the Wii U Wii issue. When the Wii U came out, people thought it was just a peripheral or like a minor upgrade. They didn't fully understand that it was a new console, which is funny because if this was on Nintendo's mind back in the 90s, they clearly did not learn from that mistake. But, you know, Nintendo is going to Nintendo, and you can't stop a Nintendo from Nintendoing, that's just what they do. Then he goes on to lament that fans are saying that new games that are worthwhile aren't coming out until 1998, likely referring to Zelda 64, Zelda Ocarina of Time. Basically, people are saying, I want something as revolutionary and game-changing as Mario 64, but we're not quite getting that for a while. 
So essentially he is pointing to a marketing and titling issue in addition to a lag of games being developed. There simply just wasn't enough content for the N64 to thrive. Now I think that this is an interesting take because it's a very macro look at it versus a micro look. Yes, there's a lag of games, a very small trickle of games coming to the N64, but the reason for that is the format. Cartridges were more expensive to produce, they were more expensive for publishers to purchase, and they had size limitations. So all of these games were switching platforms. He doesn't mention that at all. It's just that big overhead look of, yeah, there need to be more games. And those games need to be revolutionary. Mr. Miyamoto also goes on to explain some of his design philosophy. Those are so-called Super Famicom-ish game worlds aimed for Disneyland fun. I can say that. Disneyland exists as a complete play space, so people can have fun that's already been planned out. There are similar games on my Super Famicom, whether it's Mario or Zelda. These are, so to speak, our developed play spaces we want people to enjoy. That applies to the new Legend of Zelda planned for next spring on the N64. Just like the Famicom and Super Famicom editions of the Zelda series were extensions of the series at one point. For the gameplay of Mario, Zelda, or Star Fox, they're just like walking around Disneyland and finding things to do. You're encouraged to explore and discover things. Basically, the reason for improved N64 versions of Super Famicom games is to bring these games closer to how Disneyland is. Now, interestingly, he goes on to say that the N64 as a console is incomplete by itself. It's meant to function as a hub in a framework of hardware. It isn't just the N64 alone. The framework of play expands with the N64 DD. With the 64DD, users can rewrite their own game data. It has three main points that make it fun. Enhancing, replacing, and adding. And of course, side note, never releasing. In the US anyways. You save a record of how you grow your game's world and you can exchange that file with others' files. You can even add new content and incorporate it into your game's world. The N64 isn't complete by itself. The interviewer then goes on to ask if this style of play, brought on by the 64 disk drive, contradicts the Disneyland analogy of having a complete play space. They ask, in other words, to bring out players' creativity, you need to provide a game world with blank areas that have open possibilities, instead of a full box garden. It'd be more like an empty box, or an open field, instead of a, an attraction-filled Disneyland. Miyamoto says, exactly, but isn't that the fun of Disneyland too? You can always run around without a route, and swing sticks around if you like. It's not a place where someone forces you somewhere. In my own imagination, that's my own kind of fun made possible through the power of the games on the 64DD. As a producer of this way to play, that's a lofty goal. To put it simply, providing ways to play in both the Disneylands and the not-so-Disneylands is important to me. Now that's a fascinating perspective, both in regards to design, but also in regards to the N64 being incomplete. Basically, they had a perspective that no one else had. The public didn't have it, third-party developers didn't have it, the game magazines, the press didn't have it. No one believed that the N64 by itself was incomplete. They thought it was its own console. But, at least higher up at Nintendo, they thought of it just as a tool to sort of add on the DD. Add on Game Boy functionality. Be able to expand, 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 do all of these big, lofty, creative goals but they only ever really fully released the core unit and of course the DD in Japan only for a short time. And this would kind of explain the N64's performance. They had all of these big dreams for it, but the core unit itself could not fulfill those dreams. It could only just play the games that it could play on cartridge format and that's what it could do. And that probably contributed to its financial failure. So I wanted to thank all of you again for helping to fund this translation. I'll be including scans of the interview, as well as some high quality scans of this awesome cover with the N64 flying around with little wings and a little star in a cage. It's really trippy and cool, and I hope that you all enjoy. And of course, a big thank you to Cody again for doing the excellent translation work. Really, really appreciate it. He actually also did another uh, shorter translation from Mr. Itoy right after the release of Mother 2 i.e. Earthbound on the SNES, and we'll be releasing that shortly as well. Uh, so, appreciate it again. Thank you all for watching. If you'd like to support the show, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you never miss a video, and we'll see you all next time.